Welcome back to OmniFactory. Today I went out and did a bit more exploration, spent another hour or so looking around, looking for more drill cores over around our world. And it took me about an hour, did find two eventually, on which I just wanted to share a quick tip. Use these roadways. Your ender hook is not just a tool for leaping between buildings, but is a tool for very, very quickly moving along roads or any flat surface, really. Because once you basically have an ender hook, you can just keep extending it ahead of you and you can just see how fast we're actually moving pretty fast. And of course, you can get into all these buildings which come alongside the roads at various points. So it is probably worth your while to actually do this and get exploring. At least until you have three drill cores. I've used one, remember. We're going to be using a little bit more, and we should be okay for that, I think. I don't think we need any more than three, but because uh, we've already used one. Uh, but do let me know if you know otherwise. All right. So in here, and I did just get another set of dark steel boots um, just from the random chests that has jump two, so we can double jump. And that does help a little bit. I think it's probably three. Yeah, three blocks, something like that. We should be able to get up now. Good. Very, very happy with that. So we needed a couple of things, and uh, there's a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff I picked up from chests as well. Was there anything in particular I wanted to point out? Um, maybe? Yeah, these. I haven't actually looked at what we actually use these for yet, but uh, uses a uh, small pile of gold dust, or just gold. So I... Not too great then, but they do actually process down, so I guess that's fine. Also, purple drink. Not sure about purple drink. There is, doesn't seem to be any uses other than drinking it, so... Yep, other than that, uh, we're fine, and we got a few more enchantments, but not too many of them. Did I get actually any in the system? Um, enchant. Yeah, we got a few. Feather falling, airtight seal, and smelting. None of which I particularly need right now. Uh, so we can add this all the rest of these to the system. Now, I did put down another ender chest with white colours. I'm now using the orange colours like normal for my tools. White colours will be the input to the system. I just don't, haven't crafted any input buses yet, so we'll need to do that. Uh, the other things you'll find out there in chests fairly often are the bimetal gears, I think. Yeah, so we've got six of them and one of the vibrant bimetal gears as well. So handy to just pick them up as and when you see. And there's another one in my inventory. There's three more. So, yeah, that's nine of them. Regardless, we're okay to go from there. Now, uh, what do we actually need? Let's look at the quest book. And there has been an update, so we just want to make sure when we do an update. Uh, this is 1.2 we're on now. 1.2 of the quest, the mod pack. Uh, we just want to make sure we reload the quest book. And just to make sure there are no changes. Uh, that's all fine. Although this just needs me to do a few more things to actually get this. So why don't we do that? Some electrum and some aluminium. And that's enough to get pretty much all of that. Uh, so aluminium. Yep, just a couple of you. Do remember when you're crafting stuff in AE2, unfortunately, you have to take it out and put it in your inventory before you can get it counted very often. So be a bit careful about just crafting stuff and assuming that your quest book will pick it up because it won't. And that hopefully should be that. Okay, claim that back. And um, pretty much everything else apart from the backpacks are now done. And there's an Iron Man quest. Now, the, the jetpack is a prerequisite to the Angel Ring. I well, did mention it last episode, but I didn't actually look at what you'd need to do it. The Angel Ring is the normal first creative flight. And it used 32 GP. Sometimes some mod packs have a version that doesn't use GP, but we will need one, which means we will necessarily need some kind of uh, grid power going on. However, that's not the main issue. <laughs> the main issue is this. To, to make this, we have to get rose gold, and someone's been watching Apple stuff if they like rose gold. In fact, that's even the wrong colour. Rose gold, from an Apple point of view, should be like a pink colour. Anyway, rose gold is quite straightforward. It is just copper and gold in the case of Greg Tech. However, we have these four uh, jetpacks needed for the ring. So two vibrant jetpacks and two reinforced jetpacks. And the vibrant uh, probably have the, well, energetic is the prerequisite. And reinforced have hardened. Okay, so energetic, electrical steel, conductive iron, etc, etc, all the way down. However, each of these things require their own bits and pieces as well, like the conductive iron thrusters, plates, electrical steel, 
uh, pulsating crystals. We've made one of those before. All that we've done before, so I'm not going to do it on camera, but you get the idea. Um, we are able to, to craft this with a, quite a bit of effort. It's just a lot of manual crafting, though, so I'm going to show you it once we get... I'm probably going to do this episode, but once we get to the, this point, unless we need something for the extended crafting table, uh, we need catalysts, don't we? And they are going to be iron and black, um, black steel? Not dark steel? Black steel is black steel dust, which is black bronze dust, steel dust. Well, three of those things we can get. We can't do red coal until we get one more source of GP, but everything else is fine. Black bronze dust, silver, gold, and copper. So, yeah, it is all technically doable, but um, it just requires a lot more work to actually get to this particular point yet. Luminescence, electron plate, glowstone plate. Uh, luminescence is aluminium and energetic blend and some phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid we can't do yet. We're going to need other stuff. So phosphoric pentoxide or... Phosphorus, dust, water, and oxygen. Phosphorus, dust might be the easier way there. Phosphate. Um, would be nice. Phosphate ore, we can get it from. Or probably some other stuff as well. So yeah, th there's quite a lot involved in actually getting to an angel ring. Which may mean we get uh, started out with a jetpack to get started. And uh, we get further up this tier. So yes, um, there are thermal jetpacks. The leadstone and there is another one set of ones as well uh, i think it's in the quest book two over here so leadstone jetpack yeah and uh, we're going to need both chains eventually but i'm going to leave that off camera obviously until we get to the, the tier three and tier four that we need to make the angel ring with right so from here i guess we could do the compacting drawers but uh, again that should be straightforward so we can leave it off i did want to grab a glider um so we could probably make that and it's useful for just, once you get to the top of a building, just gliding your way back. Before I had a problem because we didn't have, uh, oh, it's got some iron rods. Okay, so we need six iron rods. I didn't have any leather, and it's leather that these things are made out of. So glider wing, I don't think there's any left wing, is there? Is there a left wing? There is. And I'm one leather short. But out there, um, one quick tip on those roadways is that if you do head along a road, you tend to find cows quite quickly. So we could go and find a cow or two or convert over some rotten flesh. Uh, I'm going to need the cows regardless for milk for the cake on that recipe that we got last episode. But for now, uh, we can just get some rotten flesh. 196. You see, I find quite a bit by going out there. And oh, nice to be able to jump up. There we go. Leather. And... That's that done. And then we want some iron rods. Iron ingots. And let's just put 16 in and it'll make a fair number of rods. I've been making gold rods as well, just so we have a large stock in of each particular kind. Uh, this drive is now full of, of storage cells, but two of these drives are entirely empty still. So yeah, we shouldn't need another drive just yet, but you get the idea. Um, for six that should be enough so let's get rid of that recipe and there we are so we should be able to get a glider from that okay and if we go outside yep glider if we go ahead all the way up so we can just get across here and then whenever we need to divert to anywhere, well, we can just pull ourselves in with the underhook. So yeah, pretty happy with that. It is faster to go with the underhook once you're onto a surface or once you're, you know, on top of buildings and something. But otherwise, oh, that was a spider. Never mind, we just run past him really, really fast. <laughs> oh, look, cows. Uh, I need to bring buckets. I need to, do I have no buckets, buckets with me? No buckets. <sighs> Fine, I'm going to go get some milk just because we need to make that cake at some point. Or indeed, I'm just going to go and capture a cow or two. I wonder if there's... Um, I wonder if the lasso is in this pack. It is. Yeah, that's pretty simple to make. Yeah, I think we're going to go and get some cows. Back in a second. Cows. Lots of cows. One, two. 
Okay, we got a breeding pair. That's perfectly fine. Back to the base. So with those, milk is quite easy, and I've already been out to just grab a few buckets, and we get a cake easily enough and get the buckets back, so that will do for the cake. And that means we can make the augment for the drill, the second speed augment. We should be able to shift click that and get speed augment too, so now this thing can go faster, uh, presumably. Unless they both have, they're both, they're both stack? Mm, not sure if they do. Let's go and give it a try. Plain stone then. That's pretty good. Is that any slower if we just go with that? Yes, it is. Okay. So we want both of them in. That's pretty good. I like that a lot. And this is probably going to have, yeah, I just need to put a torch down. That's no problem. And that's pretty good. So, yeah, I'm happy with that in general. And we can get back to the base really quickly now. Well, sort of really quickly. Depends on how well you aim with your ah, ender hook. There we go. Alright, so mining is no longer much of an issue. Good, I'm very happy with that. Now, moving on. So here we are at the Precision Laser Engraver. We have a wafer and a diamond lens. A diamond lens is just a diamond in the uh, autoclave. And you get ram wafers out of it. Now, the ram wafers are part of this quest, which we should get. Good. Raw circuit wafers. And then we get circuit chips, which is the next stage up. So we need to get RAM and integrated circuits. Integrated circuits, I think we already have. So let's just go and pick one of those up. I think they're in this machine here, the assembler machine. We do. So let's just grab one of you. That should count. And then we need one RAM. So we need the RAM wafer and a cutting saw. Don't think we've made a cutting saw. And it only comes in MV tier. Or have we? Did I actually make one upstairs? Maybe I did for the uh, the wafers in the first place. Cutting sort, cutting machine. Does that count? It's doing something. <laughs> okay, let's just uh, let's just see what this actually does. Let's just take a look. Uh, cutting saw. Yeah, it is the advanced cutting machine. Good. Okay, so that should make us some RAM, which will get us that quest done. And that'll move us on into this first tier three circuit. So technically we've already done a tier three to get the patterns, but or the patterns or the interface is one of the two. And uh, but this is um the second tier two circuit and then the first tier three circuit that's actually cheap enough to, to want to make en masse. And then we also need to do this one, which is the uh stuff we've not uh, have we done the electronic processor yet? I'm almost sure we have. Yeah, we've got to have done it. Maybe I never picked it up. Hmm. That would be very odd for me to do, though. Is that finished yet? 82%. This one, I've got some more RAM wafers, so we'll just convert those up into uh, more RAM. And you should be done. 96, 37, 99, and RAM. Okay. Give me the quest. Thank you very much. And we should get to more Omni Pennies. Now, if you also remember last episode, I did mention that. Um, the drill cores were far too expensive if you wanted to just buy them rather than explore for them. What I wasn't looking at was up here, and we have these three quests that I never went and did. But you can see in Overworldian mobs, we get 250 Omni Pennies for this one, and the same for each of those. So if you do need more Omni Coins, they are available. You'd have to craft the other data models. This one is probably our closest, the thermal and uh, elemental data model, but that has a bit of a complication and it needs stuff like cryothium or aerothium or petrothium, and those need either a blizz rod, um, or you need to make that from elemental reduction fluid, which is hydrofluoric acid, which is fluorine, and you've got to go and make fluorine. So we don't have to worry about it just yet because it doesn't really have much in a way, a good loot by comparison to each of those loot uh, sort of blocks we've got out there right now. Um, so it only has, I think, various blizz, blitz, etc., rods, and I want to say a couple of other things, but nothing essential. I did take a look at what we can actually get with it. So that's that done. And now we need to move on again. Um, I'm going to want to probably look at the circuits a little bit. Now, the quest in the quest book was for the circuits we've already made. So I didn't do that bit on camera. They're both the same circuits. And while we're talking about those, we're going to be starting to make a production line for circuits very soon now. And to do that, we need, well, well, even before I get there, I need lots of interfaces. If you remember, we made a couple, but they are, they're not easy to make. Um, the MV machine holes getting towards easy. I mean, it just needs lots of aluminium plate. 
wrought iron and copper. However, robot arms, not so much. So before we get them entirely automated, let's make a batch of them so that we have lots of robot arms. Well, about 20 robot arms, I consider OK, uh, of medium voltage tier. So I crafted full stacks of all this stuff because we're going to make a full stack of, well, electric motors. And there was like two short in the middle. I can't believe I was too short. Honestly, I think one piece of steel. One piece of steel. <laughs> must make it an even stack. Even though it won't divide properly, I must make an even stack. Um, just in case there is any kind of uh, quest for having a stack of <laughs> electric motors in your inventory. I very much doubt there is. It's just limited to ingots um, over here on the end game tab. See, it's just ingots pretty much. But uh, hey, yours wants some kind of achievement. Where's my lathe? There we go. You can get converted over and that'll make the final two. We're then going to take these electric motors, move them over to here. And we have, you see, I'm partway through chunking through a lot of uh, aluminium out there. And um, we do have an advantage in that, in that, whoops, let's put it in here. There we go. One full stack of electric motors. The electric motors needs to be divided into three here. So I'm just going to put uh, 20 and we'll have four spare, I guess. Well, let's just make 21. Yeah, then I'll have one spare. So we have them in two different proportions. We're going to get take that to there. That looks to make pistons. This one can be spread out this way. I think this is the recipe for the robot arm. Yes, it is. And then we just need the pistons. So uh, why aren't you? Ah, yes. So I can craft a couple. And if I just craft one, just so I can put one over here, and you'll see that's our recipe for rub arms. So all I really need to get for this is a huge amount of copper cable. Uh, but the rest is just, in fact, I don't need a huge amount. I just need to make everything up to 21 in all of these cases. So that's like 39 copper cable. And what's that? Um, 30 aluminium rod. And then pretty much the same in here to make it up to 20. So lots more aluminium. One second. Well, <laughs> more like a few minutes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a lot of materials. Although, <laughs> we're going to need them. Oh, that feels so painful. Anyway, we do need those uh, robot arms. And it's just easier just to make a batch of them. Once you make one, you may as well make lots of them. Once you start getting enough materials in, like we are now. So, uh, to combine that, well, then we need to make an interface. And that is slightly problematic. Now, I have added this into our system but you'll see here it says missing one wrought iron wrench because it can't deal uh, with um, the um, the recipe for that, which is in here somewhere. Yeah, it's these two. MV machine casing and then MV machine hull because they are made with a something that has basically a damage value. And can we actually get rid of that for a second? We've got one blank pattern left. Let's just go for machine casing. Machine, machine casing. And I'll demonstrate. So there is one recipe in crafting, and there is also an assembler recipe. And that's probably where we should go with this. Uh, there's a basic assembly machine, of course, but we can make an advanced assembly machine. Oh, look, it has two uh, robot arms. But it also requires, yeah, tier three circuits. <laughs> and yes, I can make them, and I did make a few. Uh, we haven't really... I'm going to, need to make more motors, clearly. So we could actually make this up if we wanted to. But I'd rather get, you know, I'd rather use these these tier 3s for the AE2 stuff that are needed rather than uh, MV. So let's stay with low voltage. And then we need just processors and the low voltage stuff. So that's going to have to be made as well. And that gets us another assembly machine to make this more... Um, or what should we say, more predictable. However, in the meantime, we can just make a batch of them, basically. So let's just get see how much aluminium is in here. Uh, I'm going to want a bunch of plate. And let's just get this to craft our plate then. So plate, aluminium. Uh, why, don't we, whoops, why don't we just craft, I don't know, 20 of it. We'll get that started. And then we'll just use... Uh, do I have my steel wrench? I did have a steel wrench somewhere. Wrench... Um, I may have put it down somewhere. Here, steel wrench. I made a steel one just because it lasts a lot longer. And now I can't remember where I put it. Steel wrench. There it is. 
Okay, and um, we'll just make a batch of these up. It's just easier for the moment because once we do have that, it doesn't need to go and do the recipe for those. So there's the MV machine casing, and then the MV machine hull is uh, just there. And this is one of the ingredients for interfaces. So we do actually need that among everything else. So we've got some aluminium plate coming in, some raw time plate, and the rest is just copper cable. So there we go. And we can just get, oh, in fact, we'll just put it in the system. Let's see how much of that we have. Uh, I could have done that in this, in this crafting grid. Anyway, MV machine hull. Okay, and let's just see if it can craft them. Copper cables what we're missing. And that is pretty straightforward now. I can just uh, go and grab a bunch of rubber sheets. Uh, I think I put them all in the system, so we can just clear you for a second. Make a stack of rubber, well, a stack of copper cable, and then we should be able to make them MV machine hulls. Um, we can just tell it to craft. Uh, no CPU available. Okay, we'll just craft it manually. Hull. MV machine hull. Good. Three of those. And now, can you make an interface for me, please? Or can you make a few? Let's just see. Can you make all three of them? We need two logic processors. And so let's just go for... Oh, one of my settings is clearly interfering. I need to actually just change that. And yes, we can now just craft an interface automatically. I do have to make a few batch things, but you can see up here, I've already started adding more interfaces and we'll have more patterns in there. The patterns, of course, are the expensive bit. We need electronic processor arrays to make them, and you'll see I've made four. All of those are going to go into patterns because... In fact, let's just make two into patterns because we're going to need them um, when these interfaces come up. So patterns and shift click. We're going to get 16 patterns. Good. Things are starting to speed up quite nicely. So we've now got 18 spaces. And uh, in here, you see I've only got three left, so we would like to have another interface onto the side of this molecular assembler to store more recipes. Of course, you can also craft more molecular assemblers. And uh, let's just take a look at those. How... Uh, that's not too bad, actually. Crafter... Uh, yeah, that's not actually too bad. So making more molecular assemblers is not going to be a problem. We are now, however, got to a point where I've got in quite a few circuits. I can make up some processes with those circuits if I want to. Um, I've got some bits and pieces I need to actually craft in here. I need to get some more resistors. We'll get that crafted because we're going to take these assembly machines and we're going to create a chain with them. We're going to create a chain that will craft our circuits. Now, what are we going to need? So remember when we get started, we need resistors, which needs uh, copper in copper wire form, the fine version, and it also needs coal dust. So we're going to need to input copper uh, so copper and coal. So we need two wire mills and we need one assembly machine. Let's put this back through. Once that's done, we then need to worry about the rest. But to get started, we're going to have one machine running and creating tier one circuits. So I thought I'd make these alcoves here and we'll assemble something inside them that will start to make us circuits and start to, um, yeah, really improve things, really. So I can just take circuits whenever I need them. And with a touch of crafting, we can craft a couple of wire mills. Oh, it's so nice to be able to make great tech machines like that. Anyway, the wire mills are part of the actual deal. They will get copper ingots straight into this form of copper. We're also going to want a macerator, so we're going to need to basically process coal. Uh, we could get it directly macerated out of the system, but let's just see how much we have. We're missing a couple of things. Wrought iron... Well, that's going to be a bit of an issue. I need to go and perhaps just get some raw time made into a few of those. And um, let's just make two, just in case I need another one. Uh, so um, we need eight. And probably some tools. There we go. Uh, we need a hammer. We need a wrench. Wrench can go in. Uh, we need a file. I don't have a file on me. Got one there, and we'll slowly start moving away from this setup, but we've got two of those. Okay, that gets us nearly everything we need. Then we just need the macerator. So uh, we're missing the piston, I think. Yeah, we're missing the piston. Okay, so we just need a few 
bits of steel and make those up. So steel, need to figure out which key is actually doing that. It's one of them in the settings, it always does it. For some reason, the default configs always forget to do this, to change that key to take you out of uh, AE2. It's like a sort key or something like that, I can never remember. Anyway, uh, that is fine. I'll just get the rest of that steel out actually. We're gonna make some plates and that should do. So we're gonna need three or four and the rest we can make into rods. Okay, so hopefully that should get us everything we need. So let's go for the piston. And we probably need that small steel gear as well, which is going to need another one of the plates. Yep, so plate. And there's another one. And we just need a hammer back. Where's my hammer? Uh, well, yeah, I need a hammer, but also a wrench. Oh, I've got a steel hammer. That's fine. There we go. One small steel gear will get us everything we need there, which will get us a piston, which in turn will get us a macerator. Okay, two wire mills and a macerator. From that, we need to step into the first thing, which is basically going to produce, um, I think that is the resistors. So this is the first part of the chain. We need to put them down and get some more of this cable and probably make another CEF because we don't want really want to keep trying to extend this out all over the place. They, they'll end up sharing the same source then. So in this case, we're going to actually just go make another CEF. Is that easy enough for us to actually make uh, CEF low voltage? Uh, item slots four should do us. Uh, oh, not too far away. We need another LV machine hole. Yeah, and that needs another LV machine casing, which needs uh, just a slight change. There we go. And let's just put you in there. LV machine case, a uh, hole even, and then four conductive iron wire. Um, can we just do it like that? Is that everything we need? Yep, one CEF. And then we've got to figure out some kind of capacitor. Now we could use one of these flux capacitors if we can already make one because they seem to be much, much better than the batteries. So if we've got a sulfur dust, which I think is probably an electrolyzer somewhere no, that's pentlandite. I need another I need another sulfur. It's probably upstairs. Let's see if it's in the medium voltage tier stuff. And no. Okay, I'll go and get some. Now we're running out of time this episode, so I just wanted to demonstrate the first part of this and then I'll show you the rest once we've completed it. I've got the CEF in the floor here. It's got a full flux capacitor and that's working. Underneath here, I've ran a cable from the rest of our system, which is over there. And that is working just fine. Behind here, we've got a four by uh, conductive iron cable. And we've got basically two wire mills and a macerator. These two are all outputting to the left. So something needs to go into here on the top, maybe. And then it'll go left and then go left again. And similarly, this one will go right. So right here, we want an assembling machine and put that down. That's powering up just fine. So from here, we want to get some coal and we want to get some copper. So copper, let's grab a stack and coal. We'll grab a stack as well and let's see whether this works. We can, of course, just put it in a couple of basic drawers. So let's just do exactly that. Um, we're going to want to put it maybe around about here like this, at least for now. We'll be able to feed it directly from our system over there later. But uh, right for now, I'm not too concerned about what we do. So let me just put in, I just want to be able to feed it manually and feed coal. And let's just get our draw key. Is that in my backpack? It should be, if not. Let's just move it over. I always need access to it. Draw a key. There we go. And let's just lock these to that specific material. Okay, so now we can actually take those out and that's fine. So we're going to want to feed in um, this macerator. I don't want to allow copper into it necessarily. So I'm just going to use channels in lieu of a filter and that can go in there. So let's just say the insert channel for this is red. Well, in fact, let's make it orange because it's the closest. It's not going to extract, but it is going to insert and this is not going to do anything. So there we go. So copper is on the bottom. So uh, we definitely, in fact, no, that's the macerator. We definitely don't want that. We want black, ideally. Black, there we go, because we want copper in there. Black here. And always active. 
there it goes it's starting to create coal dust which will start inserting in here i would have thought although it doesn't appear to go in there right now i'll figure that out in a minute we can always go and extract it out but the, oh hang on that's why i'm not turning on add auto output there we go it's starting to produce now we will need to at some point you're probably using a robot arm and limit this to a single stack but since we're um, just putting this together for now i don't need to worry about it so i'm just going to go over the top i think yep don't need to go over the top but it's just making a, a little bit of clearance on the top here for me and then we've got the orange channel so let's just change that to orange now Okay, so that's our input for our copper. And let's just go for orange insert. We're not going to extract. And then we just turn this on. Okay, so off that goes. Let's make it into wire mill. Turn auto output. It's going to go in here. Turn auto output. That's going to turn into fine copper wire, hopefully. And there it goes. It's going to start producing resistors which is the first stage of our entire chain. Now, I don't want to show this, at least this first stage, I'm going to take exactly the same principles to do the rest of the circuit, you know, chain, but I'm not going to show you it necessarily. You've seen it all already, and we'll just take this entirely approach. What we can do from here, however, is uh, make sure we choose something like the top being the output side, and then we can grab our item conduits, and this is now uh, going to be our... Uh, basically let's just say red channel okay so red is going to be fine copper and from that point we're also going to want to combine it with everything else needed for the tier one circuits so tier one circuits electronic circuits that is uh there is tier one there may well be a third type let's have a look third type third and final tier one circuit okay so if we want this we need resistors, capacitors, transistors, fine tailing alloy, central processing unit, and plastic circuit board. For now, we don't necessarily need to go for that one. If we go for the second one, it's a little bit simpler. Phenolic, we can all also put in there. Uh, we need fine copper wire again, so we're going to be able to basically need to output it in two different ways. And then we're going to need capacitors and this phenolic. Capacitors are the only ones that we aren't getting from, you know, for example, this can be piped over from our... Um, our furnace, our paralysis oven that side. So capacitors is anything left, and this needs silver, again through wire mills, twice. And then we have tin alloy foil and rubber sheets. Rubber sheets go through a compactor. Tin alloy foil is through a cluster mill and through a compactor. So we need two compactors, a cluster mill, and two more wire mills. Now you start to see why, <laughs> why Greg Tech takes up so much space. However, uh, we can just you know go straight back into the the side of the ground up there there is plenty of space for us to do so there is a basement beyond that uh, that wall so we can always go further anyway i'll be doing most of that off camera i just wanted to explain the process so you know pretty much for tier one circuits we'll be feeding back that way and then maybe i will have a tier two and then a tier three etc um and as we actually get each recipe the next episode we're going to get on with doing that next set of tier circuits and the only thing remaining to get it is these plastic circuit boards so we need to get the tier where are you we need to get this plastic circuit board going so chemical reactor polyethylene sheets which you already make copper foil that's a cluster mill, then a compactor previously, and then sulfuric acid. So we know we can make that quite straightforwardly. I'll do it next episode. And then is there anything else this episode I want to just cover? Um, there was a couple of things. I'm just going to make some more. I'm not going to make some more patterns, but we do have enough patterns. I'll put another interface up here. This works perfectly well. They get passed through connectivity, so you don't need to worry about cabling everything too much. And this will just let me start to automate even more. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there for now, and we'll come back next episode to do even more automation, I think. I will be crafting more interfaces and probably getting them connected to, if not all, if, well, maybe most of these, if not all of these, to get all of our processes going. You can see these are already starting to get different patterns. There's a rod to the lathe, uh, tin, copper wire, etc. And we can hook them together in the recipes over here. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, less exploring, perhaps from now on. I am going to make, and maybe between the episodes, I'm going to use the drill cores I found while I was um, 
<laughs> out exploring drill core. I've got two of them. We can convert one over into tool casing. So I'm going to do that right now. Just one. And that tool casing is then going to form the basis of this flux bore, which is also going to form the basis of uh, the um, the vertical miner. Vertical miner. Now I'm told this is very good, very powerful vertical digger, sorry, not vertical miner. So the flux bore reinforced is just the extra bits and pieces on top of the original flux bore. In fact, can we craft this now? Drill head, stainless steel. Um... I guess we could do that. Whoops. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> let's not do that. Uh, let's do this. No, we need a few more steps. Let's wait till the next episode and then we'll see how the vertical digger is in action. We are, however, going to need power for it. Now, if it will accept power, uh, where we are, if we accept power via the flux capacitor, I could always load it with this once I recharge it. Otherwise, you know, or, you know, by some capacity, that kind of thing, that will work. Otherwise, we may want to want to look for... Do we have Tesseracts in this pack? No, we do not. Okay, so if you're a commenter, let me know if, what the equivalent of a Tesseract is in this pack. We want wireless power. Some form of wireless power would be nice. A wireless charger, not great. Nope. Um, yeah, we're going to have to look for one. Anyway, if you already know, put it in the comments. Otherwise, give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the episode. Press subscribe if you aren't already subscribed to the channel and you can get more notifications by clicking on the bell. Otherwise, we'll see you next episode for some more Omnifactory. Thanks for watching.